Hey there friends and welcome back to Lori's Boston Found where thrifted is the new black. My name is Lori and I make a full-time living selling items on Poshmark and on eBay. I buy most of my inventory from thrift stores and places like the Goodwill Outlet and I take you along on my journey. And I also make YouTube videos to kind of share my experience. I like to share a lot of tips and tricks on how I run my business in hopes that maybe there'll be something that you can relate to or some information that I'm providing that will help you along your reselling journey. Today I'm so excited to bring you a really fantastic haul. I ended up going to one of my favorite thrift stores outside of Boston. It was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which is generally a very late start for me. Um, but I just had the bug, so I decided to go, and I'm so glad that I went because it was a really great trip. I spent $209, and I got 40 items, 37 of which I'm planning on selling, and I will show you the items that I'm keeping. If that sounds good to you, definitely stick around. Hit that like button if you are having a good time at any time during this video. And if you'd like to be part of my community, I would love it so much if you hit the subscribe button. Every time I see that I have gained a subscriber, I have to tell you, it really, really means a lot to me. So thank you so much for everybody who supports my channel. Um, let's cozy up and we are going to have a great good old fashioned haul. Okay, so welcome back everybody. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am so happy that you found me. I just did two what sold videos. Well, one was a shipping video that kind of intertwined some sales that I had. And then another one was a straight up what sold video for the month of December. So I always love the in-betweens that I get to do haul videos because these are my favorite. So I spent about $5.50 per item, which is right around my general cost of goods. So I do have some shoes, um, just one or two accessories, but let's just hop right into the haul. I will start with an item that I am not selling. I got this really sturdy uh, dog bed. It's <laughs> My dogs look so chubby on this bed because I think it's meant for like a little toy dog, like a toy poodle, um, but it's, little oh no it's little dog bones but it looks like it might be leopard but it was like brand new they charged me $4.99 and it's very heavy I have a problem buying Lulu any of like little silky beds because she tears them apart and eats them so this is really heavy and um, it's awesome so I was happy to get that this is another thing that I'm not selling. I planned on selling it, but my husband Jay has been in a big uh, Guns N' Roses phase. So he's keeping this GNR t-shirt. This was $1.99. This particular store charges $1.99 for t-shirts. So, so those are two items that I am keeping. I don't know where the other one is that I'm keeping. So I went to the kids section at this store and they do have an area of the store where they mark things up, like their name brands. I guess it's like their boutique section, section but they don't always mark up the kids stuff to prices that are you know what I would say paying up for so for example this is a Patagonia it looks like an older style you know the the fleece is, is not as soft as it is in the beginning but it's these great this great chocolate brown and orange combo um, this was marked $7.99, which I didn't think was bad at all. Their typical outerwear for kids is $3.99. So this is a Kids XL Patagonia, and it was $7.99. So I'll take that all day long. Not far from that Patagonia was this Patagonia for kids. Um, this is a Cinchilla. This is a size XXL, which is a size 16 to 18. Would also definitely work for like a women's extra small. Um, and again, $7.99. And it's so nice when it's just in a separate part of the store just kind of waiting. There's less digging involved. I don't really carry a ton of kids stuff in my closet typically, but the one exception, not really exception, if, if I find a nice piece, I'm going to pick it up. Um, I don't have many rules for myself, but um, outerwear is something I really love to carry. So I also got a North Face um, that I'll show you in a little bit. This I purchased in the men's section. I thought it was a man's sweatshirt and then when I got home I realized it was a kid size 16. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this brand. I have found it one other time at this store and it's a quarter zipper. It reminds me of Vineyard Vines but the brand is Johnny O. Um, so looking to see. I don't know if you can see that very well. Anyways, it's your classic quarter zip, kind of a preppy style. It has like a little surfboard guy as the um, the little logo. And their sweatshirts at this store are $3.99. So you're going to see a fair amount of hoodies in this haul. 
because hoodies sell pretty well for me and they're a quick flip People like to be cozy, especially these days. So I really do enjoy picking up sweatshirts and hoodies from this store. All right, this was in, I don't know if this was in the sweatshirt section, but I've never seen a sweatshirt, so, so to speak, from Eileen Fisher. And this appears to have never been washed. Um, I have a new assistant, Caitlin. She's actually here right now and she's amazing. She's so efficient. She's way more efficient than me and she's photographing while I do this haul. So more than likely by the time this goes live, everything's going to be posted, which is so rare for me. I could not do this on my own. So this is a size large and it's this beautiful olive green like tunic style. This looks like it's brand new. Obviously I can't write new, but it is in excellent condition. And Eileen Fisher stuff like this, most of this stuff retails between one and $300. Their sweaters, their tops, their pants. $50 is a price point that I love to price my Eileen Fisher at because it's not too crazy expensive because if you price for me in my experience, if I price Eileen Fisher too high, it will sit forever. Um, and not that I don't, some things, some pieces I will price high to start and just see how it goes. But typically um, if I keep my Eileen Fisher pieces around that $50 price point, I feel like they move a little bit faster for me. One of the things that I love about this store is that I always find brands that I'm unfamiliar with. 10 out of 10 times when I go to this thrift store, it's about 10 miles outside of Boston, not even. I always find new brands. So I saw this sweater and the tag looked interesting to me. The brand is Carven, C-A-R-V-E-N. And it's not quite a boiled wool, but it's a wool blend. And the sweater needs a little bit of help, but it had all these embroidered um, birds and plants, like little floral pattern on it. And it's kind of had anthro vibes, a little Johnny was, but I had never heard of this brand. There's the tag. If you look up the retail on this sweater, it's, you know, a couple hundred dollars. And so even the the comps were very good too. So sometimes your retail doesn't always match what your resale can be, but this had some really great comps. So I'm very excited. It needs a little bit of attention, although it looks like Caitlin may have um, sweater shaved it. No holes or anything. It just needed some sweater shaving. I will probably price this between 50 and $75 and hope to sell it between like 40 and 50. The sweaters at the store are $5.49 and every $100 you spend, you get 10% off. So I was actually at like $2.29 when I finally checked out, but because um, I was over that 200 mark, I got an additional $20 off, which is always incentive to get up to the next level. I also find a lot of Revolve brands at the store and I'm trying to be better educated about Revolve. Um, so far, I have to be really honest, I don't know if it's just my closet, but so far with my experience, Revolve brands for me have not really lived up to their hype and it could very well be just because I don't know the, the good brands to source from Revolve, but I'm really trying to educate myself. This is one of the brands, I don't expect to get a ton for this, but the brand is called Super Down. This is also a brand that is sold on Revolve and also a hoodie so or sweatshirt. So $3.99, less 10% at the end. So this is just a long tunic sweatshirt and it has a like asymmetrical zipper right here. So that's kind of unique. It can open if, if somebody wants to wear it like split at the bottom, but just a really cute basic would look really great with leggings or I would picture this on the right person that this could be like a sweatshirt dress and I, i'm sure that that's how they probably market it on revolve so really cute super down we'll see how it goes i will probably list that for about 40 dollars. all right i was psyched to get this and for any of my massachusetts people or any of my cape cod people i'm going to hold this up and it doesn't really need much of an explanation but for those of you who are not from the area who might be unfamiliar with cape cod the beachcomber is um, a beach in Wellfleet that is legendary. It's a classic and every good Cape Codder <laughs> um, has one of these sweatshirts. So I've bought one for myself. I bought one for two of my children and they are 50 or $60. They have like a, like a store that's on the beach. You can eat at the restaurant. It's just one of the most beautiful beaches on the Cape in my opinion. And I found this for $3.99. I'm so excited. The comps are between 
30 and $65, or 25 and 65 and the $65 one really puzzled me because I went to their website and they sell these new for $50. This is Nantucket Red and I was really happy to find that. There was a new rack that came out and I grabbed a bunch of the stuff from the new rack. And this brand is called Porridge. This is a brand that sold at Anthropology, and this is just like a, a royal blue skirt that has swans on it. So I really like kind of the novelty prints that are on pieces sometimes. So there's porridge. This is kind of that mod cloth vibe, this brand, and there was another skirt. It has it has like a wrap, like a belt that is attached. Really pretty. Comps are all over the place. Probably between $20 and $40 for that. I'm gonna shoot for about $30, maybe I'll list it at $38. But the other one almost looked like a Mediterranean village or something, and there was just some bleeding in the fabric. So I left that one behind. They do charge $5.99 for their skirt, so I have to really like it. And also, skirts aren't a great seller for me, but recently I've been selling skirts. I was just going to do like an Instagram story on the amount of skirts I've been selling, because I'm always saying how I don't like to source skirts because they don't sell, but lately I've had a few that have sold. So that's encouraging so i was excited to get that i might as well mix it up i've gone so long without really adding to my skirt collection that i feel like i need to refresh it every once in a while this is another brand that is pretty high end and it's just all these tags are pretty basic but alc there you have it so i will probably list this around 40 dollars, and hopefully i get somewhere between 30 maybe i'll list it at 45 and that should go around that 30 dollar mark i'm always aiming for 30 dollars or more with my listings this brand was new to me their blazers are 5.99 here so I, I talk about this sometimes too but when you're outsourcing it's really my goodness that's very loud when you're outsourcing it's really helpful if you know kind of the personality of your store. Uh, like in this particular store, their loungewear is really inexpensive, like $4.99 or less. Their leggings are only $3.99 if they're not specially priced. Blazers are $5.99, shorts are $3.99, and hoodies are $3.99. So I really focus on their those sections. Their dresses are either $8.99 or $14.99, and I don't sell a ton of dresses, so I tend to stay away from that whole section of the store. I have found some real great gems there also, but I'm just saying like, if you kind of know the ins and outs of your particular thrift store or where you're shopping, it really helps when you're sourcing to like focus on what's gonna work for you. So this brand, Shosh, S-H-O-S-H. I have a lot of new brands in this haul, a lot. Um, so there's... One of the interesting things that I wanted to share about this is that the fabric, it's almost like sweatshirt material, but not quite, it's really nice. It's a cotton polyester blend, it's vanity sizing. Let me know if you've ever heard of this, of Cupro, C-U-P-R-O. I looked it up, it's a sustainable fabric. The article that I looked at said the sustainable fabric that nobody knows about, or the coolest sustainable fabric that nobody knows about. So I'm going to look up Cupra definition. Oh, it's Cupro. Cupro, C-U-P-R-O, Cupro fabric is made of regenerated cellulose fibers from recycled cotton linter. Cupro material is breathable and regulates temperature like cotton, drapes elegantly, and feels like silk, often used for elegant dresses and blouses. I'd never heard of this Cupro fabric, so I had to look it up. So I wanted to share that because I figured I'm probably not the only one who's never heard of it. And this does feel so luxurious. Anyways, I think this jacket is probably sold retail around $300. When I looked up the comps on, when, when I looked up retail of this brand, um, this S-H-O-S-H, -S -H, Shosh, things were very expensive. But the resale is not that fantastic. So I have that listed at $50 and I'm just gonna see how it goes. I only paid $5.99 for that. This I am not going to have listed because I am going to send this to the real real. And this is S Max Mara, made in Italy. Just a really nice black um, blazer as well. It's just like a little zip up blazer, like a really nice basic. Um, but I don't have the best luck selling S Max Mara on my own. So I am gonna send that to the Real Real and see how it does. Again, that was only $5.50. This was from the sweatshirt section and it is just a Nike dry fit. I liked the style of this. Kinda has this higher neck um, and it's a cropped sweatshirt. 
All I know is my daughter right now pretty much is exclusively purchasing cropped items for the gym. Um, she wants like a lot of cropped zip up sweatshirts. So cropped is really big right now and athletic wear is really big between the pandemic and it being January and things just everybody enjoying their loungewear these days. I feel like it's got to turn sometimes. We got to we got to get out of our sweats at one point, although I'm clearly not there yet. Like I live in hoodies. So I'm excited for that. That won't be a lot. I'll probably list it at $28 or $30. That will probably be like a $20, $25 sale. Okay, this. I have sold this North Face jacket twice, and this will be the third time I'm listing it. Um, this side tends to get so dirty, and this has only been through the wash once. Um, I've shared this before on one of my hauls, but this is a reversible um, kids plaid North Face. And for whatever reason, it photographs it. I always, I feel like I always sell it when it's on the plaid side. Like that's what gets people excited. But then the kids get it, and I think the kids wear it on the more basic side because, because this side, when I buy these secondhand, is always trashed. But I do spray and wash, and I do oxy clean, and I wash and dry this like three times before I list it to get all the shiny dirt out. Um, but then it is gorgeous, and I think the two plaid reversibles that I had before sold for, um, I think they sold for 45, between 45 and $50. I don't think quite 50, but in that 45, $48 range. And again, this was another $7.99 coat, or maybe this was $5.99. I'm gonna say $7.99, um, but isn't it so cute? I love it. It's like a size 10 or 12, I'm gonna guess. I'm not sure, but really cute. Oh, and I'm gonna digress for just a second for all of my craft people out there. I just got this new container for my pens today for all my Tombos in my favorite Castell pens, but how satisfying is this? Admit it. I love this container. It's so streamlined and clean. I did some retail arbitrage shopping today at um, TJ Maxx and I picked that up. It just makes me so happy. I'm going to film a planning video this weekend. I'm not sure when I'm going to get it uploaded because I've never filmed. I got like this arm crane that will film from above while I plan. And I'm kind of nervous because I've never done that sort of video before, but I'm super excited. All right, this is such a gorgeous eye. I find Eileen Fisher at this place like crazy. And I'm not a huge fan of Eileen. I feel like it should sell for more than it sells for, um, and I'm fussy. I think I put down three or four Eileen Fisher pieces that just didn't do it for me, but this was beautiful. 100% flawless cashmere. And it's a box style. It's a size large, and it is color blocked and there were stock photos that I found. I really, really love this. I think I priced it at 80, 100. I don't know if I priced this quite so high. I don't think I did it at 50 though, even though I just got done saying that 50 is a sweet spot for Eileen Fisher. Not a newer style with a stock photo that's 100% flawless cashmere. That's a size large. That is a recipe for price it up, Lori. Anyways, gorgeous, gorgeous, so soft. I should wear that once before I sell it. I love it. What else, what else? Um, oh, I debated on this, and then when I photographed it, I was like, oh, I should have left this behind. It's a Theory blazer, which, you know, I'm sure you've heard it from other resellers. Theory, Vince, those are two brands that are tricky that I'm usually pretty fussy with, but $5.99 for a classic black Theory blazer. I'm like, there's gotta be somebody out there who wants this, but it's a size zero, but still the $5.99 got me. And I thought to myself, well, maybe I'll just send it to the real real. And then when I was photographing it, I noticed that the cuff had been turned in and two buttons removed. So I think that kind of cancels out my chance to sell this at the real real. So I noted that it was hemmed and I priced it accordingly. If anybody is interested in this, just send me a, an email and I will give you a really good deal on it. I do want to say something about emails and DMs. I'm only going to take a second to say this. I have lost so many DMs and I am so sorry. People who have messaged me right after haul and said, I'm interested in that. And I'll say, oh, you're the first person to message me. It's all yours. I'll tag you or whatever. And I'm I, things just get lost in DMs. So if you DM me and I, with my 47-year-old brain, say, yes, it's all yours, I forget, honestly, because I, I get a quite a, f not all the time, but certain pieces I will hear from a lot of people. If you ask me for something 
and you don't hear back from me or you hear back from me and then it goes radio silence, just email me. Um, email is the best way to reach me for an item. And I may tell you it's already listed on Poshmark and check it out on Poshmark. Maybe I haven't listed it and I can sell it to you directly. But if I haven't responded to a DM, I am so sorry. You can't organize direct messages on Instagram, so it becomes an issue. Okay. Another not so great buy, but I still thought this was pretty cool. This is Zenergy by Chico's, which I don't pick up very often, but their vests are only $3.99 at this store. So I thought this was kind of a cool little vegan leather, little chevron vibe, not quite chevron, but I really liked the design of this, but I ran comps on all of the new brands to me, but stuff like this, I'm like, ah, I could probably sell that for $20 or $30 really 20 25 and i'll be lucky on this but it's really cute it's size two which is a large for chico's i just like the style of it i personally live in my north face black vest i, I really should put that vest out of its misery it's it's been really good to me but it's really time to um to move on to upgrade my wardrobe but i love a black vest personally Okay, this is another brand I don't pick up very often, but God, this is one of the most beautiful things that I found, and it is Ann Taylor, 100% cashmere, but this is like thick cashmere. This is nicer cashmere than the Eileen Fisher, which is beautiful, um, and it's like brand new. I don't know if this was ever worn. It has these like little puffy, like little balloon sleeves. Everything about this is so gorgeous. It's a size medium. I'm going to come in. Um... Not that you're really going to be able to appreciate how beautiful it is, but anyways, I'll hold it up. It's a nice, generous cut. It has the mock neck up top, just a real classic style. Absolutely gorgeous, $5.99. Cannot go wrong with that. I wonder if I should have started with shoes. I don't know, I have shoes to share. This was new with Tag. Um, I pass on a lot of J. Crew at this store. Just because, you know, J. Crew is is tough sometimes. I do like selling J. Crew, but I'm, I'm getting, you know, more and more fussy with certain brands. J. Crew definitely falls into that category. This is another stunning. This is a wool blend, blingy, fair aisle sweater. It's in an extra small. This, however, was not marked up. They definitely missed this because they would have marked this up at the store. It's new with tag. $120. I paid $5.99 for this. There are a fair amount of these listed. I think I have this listed for $70. I didn't want to go crazy high with it. I mean, $70 is expensive, but if I can sell this for $50, I'd be really happy. Um, it's already receiving some attention and it has all these beautiful jewels. I just want to make sure there's no issues with the jewels. No, all the jewels are intact. It's beautiful perfect for the winter and this may show up in my Boston collection um, at a less expensive price when I do my curated collection for my website at the end of February because I'm kind of going with cool grays and blues so you might see this one again but it'll be less expensive on my website. Um, this again was with the sweatshirts. It's a Ray Dunn very light silky very thin sweatshirt and it says Believe the price tag on this is $58. Again, new with tag, $3.99. Comps on these Ray Dunn sweatshirts, pretty good. I mean, I have this listed at $50 because there was not a single one listed. And there were comps on some of these sweatshirts. Granted, they don't all say believe, so this is kind of Christmas vibe. So I don't think I'm gonna leave it at $50 for very long. I was just trying to test the waters to see what kind of attention it drew. But I was shocked because I feel like Ray Dunn had its moment and I, I know there are some really hardcore Ray Dunn fans out there, um, but I feel like it's not what it was even a year ago. But these shirts were doing pretty well. So I'm gonna try it at 50 for a while and I would definitely take an offer on that. This Madewell piece was really cute, I thought. It is, um, it's like a ribbed, horizontally ribbed, short sleeved sweater with a bow in the back and it's really cute. There's like this area between my desk and the light. If I come in too close, you lose the detail. Sometimes you see it better from afar and it's dark outside right now. So sometimes I can't really see what you're seeing until I watch the video back. So anyways, really cute detail on that. I have that listed for $38. It retailed for 78. I did find a stock photo there. Um, there are a fair amount already listed, so I didn't want to go too high on that because otherwise some of my Madewell stuff can sit. I still love Madewell, um, but 
definitely getting more selective, but I like that. That one, that one fit the bill. I liked it. Okay, this was just one of those just because I loved it pieces. Sometimes you just gotta go with what you love. This is a kid's leather vest. I would venture to say it is vintage, but I'm not really good at dating um, Gap, but it is Baby Gap. I should look when Baby Gap came out. I know it was around when my kids were little, but look at this. If this doesn't have like Pendleton vibes, I don't know what does. It's act, it's an actual wool blend on the back, an actual leather on the front, and it is this Sherpa lined vest. The crazy thing about this is it's 15 inches when I measure it here and 15 inches here. I feel like this would almost fit like a women's extra, extra small. It's a size, all right, I want everybody to look at this and guess what size it is, like just for me holding it up. It's big, right? It's a size 18 to 24 months. I mean, I, <laughs> this looks like it would fit a six-year-old to me. So I noted that in my listing. I listed this for $45 because it is so nice. Like it's thick. It is a substantial piece, which is also what makes me feel like it might be vintage. I used to love the gap when my kids were little. Um, but anyways, isn't that a beautiful piece? Oh, and I just want to mention, because I'm mentioning in every video, I am doing my cross-listing challenge. I will be doing my reveal video. I am averaging. I'm not actually doing 12 a day because when I went to the Berkshires last weekend, I skipped out on a couple of nights of listing. So I have, I've had to make up for it in other days, but my sales are starting to come in over on eBay and it's very exciting. I have sold four things so far over on eBay and it's like a miracle every time I get a notification from eBay because it has just been so dormant for so long that I get notifications and it's like too good to be true for me, but I'm very excited. Um, I do cross post with Vendu. Oh, and another thing, cause this will be airing on Sunday. Daniela and I, Daniela is my partner. She also has a YouTube channel. You should definitely check her out. Um, but she and I are podcast partners. Our podcast, for those of you who may not know, is called Thrifters Villa. It's on all major platforms. And we interviewed two of the founders of Vendu last night. And the interview is going to come out on Monday, the 18th. Such a good interview. If any of you have been on the fence about Vendu, definitely listen to that episode. They go over all the different plans, what they have to offer, how they're expanding. They're on so many different platforms. You can download Vendu and like, I just go from Poshmark to eBay. I'm kind of boring, but they have Kittison, they have Depop, they have Mercari, they have um, Etsy, they have eight different platforms. So such a great conversation and these guys are amazing. Their customer service is amazing. So if you click the link in my description, you'll save, I think, 25% off your first month of service. Um, so definitely if you want to check it out and if you don't want to pay for anything now, they offer five free listings every month. So you have nothing to lose if you want to try five for free, um, but they're awesome and I loved that interview. So definitely check them out. I picked this up. It says it's Melville but I've, I'm assuming it's Brandy Melville. It was made in Italy. I don't know if a lot, I've seen a couple of her pieces that have been made in Italy, but it's just this kind of cute little vest. And again, $3.99 for vest. It's that chenille, very soft faux fur vest. There is no size on it, which makes me think it's Brandy Melville because Brandy Melville is one size. Oh no, it's a small. Maybe this has nothing to do with Brandy Melville. Do any of you know? I've never heard of this brand outside of Brandy Melville, um, but it is made in Italy, so maybe it's a brand I don't know about. It's just polyester. It wasn't like your typical silk or wool from Italy, so I'm curious. I was stumped by that. Let me know if you recognize that tag. Another hoodie. Surprise. <laughs> I hope you weren't expecting a lot of luxury in this um, haul. Uh, this is a Soul Cycle hoodie, and it's really cute. It's just got the little skull for Soul the Soul Cycle guy. I don't know if you can see that. And it has these little insets of rainbows, which is really cute. They did sell this at Nordstrom, it looked like. I have this listed for $38 around around there, $38 or so. Um, and we'll see how it does. I love to carry Soul Cycle, Peloton, that stuff. But in my um, What Sold video, one of my Buy Felicia's was a uh, pair of Soul Cycle collab with Therese leggings that I got from the same store that really sat for a long time. I think Peloton is really what's hot right now, not so much SoulCycle because less people can go to SoulCycle during the pandemic. Um, so I think that's why my Peloton stuff is moving much faster than SoulCycle. We have one more bag. I got these 
Ugg slippers. How cute are these? These were a little bit hard to photograph because they, they've lost a little bit of their shape, um, but these were $4.99. They are a size seven, and I thought they were cute. They had a few Ugg slippers, but some of them were really beat up. I still wanna clean these up a little bit, maybe with just some baby wipes. They're generally in good shape. I'll probably list these for about $30. So my shoes, I have not li yet listed, but I thought these were great. We'll come in close on these. These are just these really blinged out Converse All-Stars. It's like a combination of silver and gold, swirly, really cool metallic um, sequins, little tiny sequins. And these are a US size eight, women's eight. Those look big, maybe that's a men's eight. Anyways, because it says six on the bottom. So these must be an eight women's, six men, and they're adorable and all their shoes are $4.99. I only paid up for one pair of shoes on this trip and they're right here. <laughs> so I was at the register checking out and I saw these and they are rag and bone. These were only $9.99. They're these gorgeous suede with this, this little tassel leather lace, just gorgeous platforms. These are a size 39, which is a size nine and they are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Loafers, not always things that I pick up, but these were like brand new and it was again, a new brand. Uh, and excuse me if I'm, I know I'm gonna pronounce this wrong. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. I'm just gonna show it to you. I read somewhere that this was owned by Zara, U-T-E-R-Q-U-E. -E. You guys see that? These are like brand new and they're this like beautiful burnished leather. Yeah, these are made in Spain. I have another pair of shoes that are from Austria. Um, these are gorgeous and I have them listed at 50 or $60, but one of the strategies I am trying, I typically cross post to eBay and leave the price the same, or maybe I'll make like a $50 price tag from Poshmark be $49.99 on eBay because you can do cents on eBay, you can't on Poshmark. But what I'm trying is with some of these European brands that aren't really popular in the United States, I'm trying to price them up a little bit on eBay where I wouldn't get the money for them domestically on Poshmark. I'm testing the waters to see because I do do the global shipping program over on eBay, which is so easy. You send it to a warehouse in Kansas, I believe, and then they do all of the customs, paperwork, and everything. It's pretty pricey for people who are buying it outside of the United States, but it's super easy as a seller to use a global shipping program. I was intimidated for like six months when I started back on eBay, when I first started reselling seriously, um, and then I realized there's like no risk to me. It's great, and there are very few returns with global shipping for obvious reasons because it would be so expensive to ship back. So I think I priced these at $65 on Poshmark and $75 on eBay, which I don't typically do, but I'm just testing the waters with that to see how it goes. These I thought were awesome. These were just with the regular shoes. They are Club Monaco. These Western inspired ankle boots with a heel. They're just gorgeous quality. Uh, Club Monaco, it's hit or miss, but I thought these were cool. And I think that the color is really unique. You don't see this color. That could be a pro, it could be a con, but um, I think there's somebody out there. All right, I have not run the comps on these yet. These are fit flops. They are just in really good condition and they're suede and fit flops is just one of those brands. Not like my favorite style or something I get super excited to pick up, but it's something that is a consistent sale. So hopefully these will be around that $30 mark. Not a bad return for the $5 investment. Oh, I probably should be sharing sizes with you. I would just be lying if I said I could see that number. But I think I think they're a size six. I really don't know though. And these are a size 36, which is a size six. I got these Lucky Brand boots. Um, and while I was shopping, I realized that they were kind of damaged, like the leather is a little scraped up here. So I don't expect to get as much for them as I normally would. I typically get between like 35 and $50 for my lucky ankle boots. These show a little bit more wear. So these would probably be more like $30 tops, but I think I have them listed at 40. They have this quilted back and they're a good size and a good color, which is why I picked them up. There's a little bit of wear on the heels, but I really like this style. They're a nine and a half. I just thought these were cute and very comfy looking. Last up for shoes. And then I have a couple items downstairs that I'm gonna grab. This was the brand that I believe is from Austria, Hasia, Hasia. 
H-A-S-S-I-A. These are definitely very expensive shoes. They have a square toe. I don't know if this is something people are going to be looking for, but again, these are shoes that I'm gonna mark a little bit higher on eBay than I mark them on Poshmark. So on Poshmark, I have these listed for $60. Hasia Pumps Verona H Patent Square Toe with Ribbon. These are really beautiful. I hope they do well. For whatever reason, they're, um, at this particular store, I always find stuff that's made in Spain, really beautiful shoes. Um, so I'm always loving finding new brands. Have you ever heard of this brand? It seems to be really good. One of my favorite things about shopping here is being able to share new brands with you. This was a little bit of a disappointment. I paid $10 for this. The brand is J. Davidson. I had never heard of this before, but the price tag on the sweater was $179.90. And it's Icelandic wool. So that sounded pretty fancy to me. So I thought this was really nice. I saw some comps that were around the $40, $45 mark and none of them were new with tag, I don't believe. So I was like, well, if I can sell this for 40, if I spend 10, really $9, that's not bad. So I went for it, but I definitely went back and forth on it a little bit. Um, and then when I got home to film it, there's a big hole. It's not like a rip or a tear, it's just like the the yarn. No, that, that's actually a really big hole. <laughs> There's a big hole in the armpit. So I do believe it could be repaired, but I'm not gonna repair it. So I am just going to mark it as is, and I probably would have listed this around 70, 50 to $70 um, because it was brand new, Icelandic wool middle of winter i would have given it a try but now i think i'll just list it at about forty dollars and hope that i make my i'll make my money back and just move it along if anybody's interested if i have any sew sewing people go for it i know i can fix it i just know that i never will another new brand this was in the t-shirt section then i was annoyed because they charged me five dollars for it hanro of switzerland h-a-n-r-o um never heard of this brand before and the look at the comps on some of these things this is just a regular like silky long sleeved top slash long sleeve t-shirt i don't think i'm gonna get a lot for this but i wanted to try it out because the brand was new but if you look up Han hanro or hanro hanro sounds prettier um switzerland you know, if it's from Switzerland, it has to be kind of cool. I don't know if it's like a layering. It almost, it seems like a high-end loungewear. But just looking through some of the prices that things are listed at, you know, underwear for $40. A Hanro of Switzerland nightgown small, new with tag. The price tag is $245 for a slip nightgown, sleeveless. It looks like something you'd get at Savers for $3. $245, they have it listed for $140. I could not believe the prices on this brand. Another like night shirt, silky night shirt, somebody has listed for $187. Granted, I'm looking at listings. So when you go to Solds, obviously they're much more modest than what those items are listed at but still a lot in the 30 40 50 range so i'm thinking i will get like there's a cotton t-shirt for 27 dollars, so i'm thinking 30 dollars for this but i was just excited to try this out i actually love finding new brands so much and just giving them a shot so we'll see more new brands to me i don't love looking through jeans but i need jeans and these were new with tag and they seem to be made well no pun intended, because they're not made well. But the MIH, MIH jeans, these may have been another Revolve brand or something fancy. They are size 26. I don't know what this tag is. This might have been like the original price tag. Um, but the comps on these were good. This is the London Mid-Rise Subtle Boot Cut. Um, so they're nothing crazy, but they're nice and they're new with tag and I don't really need size 26 jeans. I need some larger jeans, but generally I need to start paying closer attention to pants. I'm getting low on pants because I don't source them all the time. So I need to pay attention. And I went back and forth on these and I decided to get these as well. Let me know what you think. These are AYR, another new brand for me. I just saw these and I'm like, I gotta look these up. I always regret not looking up things at this store because usually there's something good they have a little slit in the back 
I'm anticipating to get between like $35 and $50 for these pants. So they're just a very classic black. I believe they're a size eight. So um, yeah, I was happy to get that. So Caitlin is filming one last thing downstairs and that is an Eileen Fisher suede clutch. It's just pretty basic, but it was new with tag. I paid $12.99 for it. Um, and I will probably list that around $50 or $60. So that's it. I love sharing new brands with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. The end of this month is going to be really exciting. Um, and I did want to share with you, I am thrifting across New England at the end of this month. I've been talking about it in like every video. I decided that instead of doing it, four days in a row and stressing myself out over editing. Um, I want to do two states first. I think I'm going to do the series January 29th, 30th, 31st, and then February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, which is the start of Thriftless February. Again, for those of you who are new in the month of February, I really halt my thrifting until I meet a listing goal. So I'm going to do that again this year. If anybody wants to join me, if anybody has piles they need to attack, if you want to stay out of the thrift stores with me in February, I am going to have my thrift across New England series to keep you company while you are home listing with me. So I will have a couple that I will release in the month of January and then the rest will come out at the beginning of February. But next week, I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm going to Vermont next week or Maine. I wanna go to the spots that are far away first and check those off. I think Jay and I are gonna go away for a night, which it would be really fun. And I think it's gonna be Vermont, but I'm not positive. So I am so excited for this. Um, I hope it lives up to the hype that I'm creating for myself. I mean, they are just thrift stores in different states, but I'm excited about it. Um, that's all for today. I hope you guys are having a great week of sales. Thanks again for stopping by. I love you guys, and I will be back very soon. Bye.